Well, here we are in cathedral pictures. And uh, this is the first animation that we've done to a uh, pre-existing piece of music. Uh, many people have asked, you know, could you animate classical music? And uh, actually, it, it turned out that uh, HP uh, approached us to do an animation uh, to roll out um, a new line of digital projectors. So it needed to be a high definition uh, animation. And uh, they wanted it to be to a known piece of classical music. Uh, and I worked with a, a wonderful person there uh, named David A. Williams. And we went back and forth uh, on various ideas and ended up uh, with uh, excerpts from uh, pictures at an exhibition uh, by Masorsky and it's uh, very recognizable. A lot of people are, are familiar with the music. Uh, not everybody knows uh, where it came from or what the history behind it was, but um, you know, HP wanted something that was recognizable and uh, I'd love the music and so that worked out nicely. Um, what not everybody realizes is this, this music was originally written by Mussorgsky uh, for uh, solo piano. And it's been since uh, arranged also uh, for orchestra. And uh, of course, there's a, a well-known uh, version done by Emerson, Lincoln Palmer, uh, one of my favorite bands of all time. And uh, it was with a little bit of fear and trepidation that I approached uh, doing our version of it because so many people uh, know and love this music and I didn't want to mess it up too much realizing that uh, that was a distinct possibility um, and also being as familiar as I was uh, from years ago with uh, ELP's version I, I was hoping that that wouldn't sort of be creeping in in, in the back of my head and, and influence uh, too much uh, the approach that I took to the music here and um, so I actually didn't listen to that version at all during the whole production. I hadn't heard it in years, and I still was a little worried that it was going to be too similar in, in some respects. And, and when I was done, I went back and I, and I listened to the ELP version, and uh, I was relieved that I didn't end up lifting stuff directly out of there, uh, any of the drum riffs or anything like that. But I'm sure it has some similarities, just the fact that it is integrating in uh, some rock instruments with uh, known classical stuff. Um, so anyway, it, uh, this was definitely, I'd have to say, the most complex environment that we had put together. Uh, it was actually the first production that we worked on for Animusic 2. Um, Dave and I took a, 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 an extended break after uh, Animusic 1 out of uh, sheer exhaustion. Uh, but, but this is where we started back in again and doing this thing for, for HP and then um, you know having arranged for us to be able to use it uh, on our DVD when that finally came out. And um, so this is, this, is, this is where we got started. And it was uh, very complex um, f uh, compared to some of the stuff we'd, we'd, we'd done before. And it also, because it was done for HD, high definition, um, it's, it's, it's very detailed, a lot of small moving parts and everything. And uh, of course it looks great on their projector equipment, but it was very, very challenging to get it to look half decent on regular standard resolution uh, TV, like you're seeing it here. Many challenges, uh, both with the rendering uh, and also with the encoding. And the guy who uh, who did the encoding, a, a top production uh, facility in L.A., who does uh, DVD encoding for all kinds of major studios, uh, said, you know, you should sell this stuff to uh, as as example material to, to break encoders because it's impossible to encode this stuff. And this was the most challenging piece. Uh, in the whole thing. Getting this to look good was, was, was next to impossible. But I guess that's what we get for taking something that was done for high definition TV and uh, doing a standard definition version. Well, I mentioned earlier that this was the first animation that Dave and I launched into uh, for Animusic 2. Uh, we don't produce them in the same order that they appear uh, on the DVD, uh, we produce them in, in the order based on kind of what we're inspired to do at the moment. Uh, sometimes we work on two or even three at the same time in parallel. 
And then at the end, they're, they're arranged according to uh, the order that seems to flow the best and various uh, different other reasons. We may even make a change in the 11th hour as far as the playlist to get it to, to flow uh, in a way that kind of makes sense. Now, of course, you can always uh, go to the index menu on the DVD, and from there, it'll take you to, there's one sub-menu for each of these eight animations, and uh, from there, you can, you can play either the full screen version or the widescreen version of that particular animation, as well as watch uh, slides of uh, some of the early art development and uh, whatever the particular bonus uh, feature is for that animation.